with little wants. Church of Jesus Christ is under attack. Your unbelieving neighbors and aren't your friends. And those who depart from sound doctrine in the way of sin will come to you and say, come with us, it's all right, it's okay. And they would draw you aside and lead you out of the way. Sin is deceitful. Satan is a liar. And you and I must know our own infirmity that when it comes to standing in the midst of sin and temptation, we are weak and sin is stronger than we are. We stumble and halt in the way. You see that in the life of the church. We have endured as churches for a season. That's a blessing. It's a gift. You didn't earn it. But it's one that doesn't take much. The might and power of that world and that which seduces into sin and folly. An error of doctrine is part of that offense. Doctrinal sins are sins too. And it is an amazing wonder that we endure from generation to generation. So in the light of that, beloved, that Jesus, having set that world in front of us, turns to something that is rather important, the danger of that world. He doesn't address here the rather self-evident matter of base transgression or overt transgression of the Word of God. That is sin. We know that to be sin. But in the light of the infirmity of our nature and our own spiritual weakness, Jesus points out something to us. He uses the figure of our body, of our eye, through which you and I see and know the world, and the world enters our soul. He uses the figure of our hands through which you and I labor and go to work and pick up the things of this life and handle them. He speaks of our feet and he is talking about that through which you and I walk through this life. He's not talking now about some kind of literal amputation of a limb in our text. That's not the point. He's talking about the reality that as you and I stand over against that world, we are in it, but we are not to be of it. We are not to make our home there, to be comfortable in it, to spiritually let our guard down. To look at that life of the world in a kind of superficial way. As if we can all just get along and you have your religion and I have my faith. And we're all a little bit different perhaps, but it's not really a big deal. And that isn't how he approaches it. Rather, our Savior takes that activity of seeing and he talks about your eye and he takes that activity of your hand and what you do with it and how you use the things of this world 
and what you're busy with in work and play and where your feet go. And he puts it concretely when he says, Now, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, lead you into sin. Cut them off. If your eye offend you, lead you into sin, becomes the instrument through which temptation enters. Pluck it out. Now there's an important element here, beloved, of a certain principle about Christian liberty. You and I have liberty in Christ. The walk of a Christian life is not one of rule-keeping. There are boundaries. We are to flee fornication and adultery and all uncleanness. We are to put away from us wrath and malice and clamor and evil speaking. Those things are sin. But our Savior goes a little further than that, and he does this. Because there's nothing wrong in itself with that eye. And there's nothing wrong in itself with that hand. And there's nothing wrong in itself with that foot. He's not talking about uh, that which is self-evidently sin. But what he has in view is your weakness as you walk through that world, seeing and handling as you go in and out from day to day. You as a child of God, because of your distinct nature, have things that confront you. They're not in themselves sin. But for you, that I and what you're seeing with it becomes an instrument to temptation. That your brother in the church may very well engage in the same activity and for him it is no sin, because it does not cause him to offend, to fall into sin. But for you, what you're doing with your eye, or what you're doing with your hand, because you are weak and sin is deceitful, for you, that activity leads to sin. And in such a way that what you are doing in your life as a child of God leads likewise those little ones in your house into sin. Now that's what Jesus is driving at. There are things in this life that a child of God may do. And there are things that he may use. All that technology out there to pick on one example. But for some children of God, that becomes the vehicle to lead into temptation to sin. There are activities that you engage in, recreational ones, or places you go, that another child of God may go there. And it works no ill. But you have a weakness. And when your eye sees, it runs into sin. And when your hands handle, it leads into sin. And when your feet go there, you're weak, and you stumble. 
You understand, beloved, the range of what Jesus is talking about is very broad here. You can take and apply it to everything from sins against the ninth commandment on Facebook to where are you? 